It is 2008. And every day I wake up with the same first thought on my mind. Let's put on this uniform and go to my battle station. I dreamt every night that I was still in the Royal Dutch Navy, although it had been over 15 years that I left the Navy as a telegrapher. So why did this period in time seem so important to me? And then I realized the Navy was the place where I was born again. And I'll tell you why. Do you remember, as a child, the only thing you really, really wanted was to make your parents proud of you? Of course, I had the same drive, except I grew up in a family with a lot of violence and alcohol. And nothing I did seemed right. I remember this time in high school, I wrote a winning paper on a Dutch minesweeper, and I received a coat of arms badge, which my father hang on the wall. In my recollection, the only time he was really proud of me. So, when I was 18 years old, I decided to join the Navy. After my first week at Naval Base Den Helder, I returned home proudly with two duffel bags wrapped around me. My father, drunk as usual, came looking for me. This night, as many nights before, it always ended into a fight. And in, a, in an attempt to hit me, my father fell down the stairs and lost consciousness. And then I realized nothing I could ever do would win me his appreciation. So I took my clothes, filled up my duffel bags, and left home to never come back again. In the Navy, I finally found what I needed. I was finally out of the flight or fight mode. I found new life values, like connection, friendship, responsibility, but most of all, freedom. And can you imagine shipping on a mission for six months, knowing you would finally be left alone? So, I'm a little bit emotional. <laughs> So, um, what I found in the Navy, I never found again in the civilian world. So, after 15 years, I wanted to return. And at this time, the only chance for me was as a humanistic counselor. So, I applied to the University for Humanistic Studies. And it was here, for the first time in my life, I had to reflect on my own history. Something I kept inside for all these years, feeling like a stone on my chest affecting my daily, daily reality for years and years. So, this period in time was very important to me and then I realized that only by telling your story you can transform the shape of the emotion which has been locked inside for too long. By telling your short story you can make it a new shape, one you can live with more easily. It was um, two years ago, uh, an opportunity came to me. It was an opportunity where I can help each other or uh, other people to uh, tell their own stories, to bring their own stories into the light, really. And uh, in essence, it's about the stories of soldiers and their stories are transformed by musicians for everyone to hear. And as the philosopher Alain de Baton says, Art is our new religion. Through art, we can recognize ourselves and each other. So our feelings of sorrow can meet, meet each other and be less grieved together. And in this Your Song project, every new encounter we had, we set new values and they melted together on this new horizon. So, seven stories were brought into the surface. Um, bonded together by this new, or by this, by this language called music, this universal language. And the Your Song project became a documentary and it became a live concert. The stories of the soldiers 
uh, were performed in their preferred music genre, from rock to classical music, from soul to rap. And, um, oh God. <laughs> the thing is that, um, what I said before, if you have like stories and keep them inside, they get locked. And it's very important to bring the stories outside of yourself. Because, and that's the thing that happened in the Your Song project, the stories were told varying from uh, troops in contact and becoming brothers in arms to very personal dilemmas, which in general fall harder on soldiers than they do on civilians. Because it's exactly those men and women who fight for freedom with high values who keep their stories locked inside, imprisoning themselves for too long, like I did, and like Robert Lichtenfeld did. And Robert, he looks like a typical Dutch guy but um, he grew up in a family of diplomats. And he grew up in Ghana and Egypt and Germany. And when Robert is 12 years old, his parents get divorced and his father travels to Denmark and his, uh, he travels with his mother back to Holland. And 12 years old, he says to himself, somebody has to be the man. And if my dad isn't here, I will take this role. During the pre-training to get into the military, Robert hears that his father has cancer. At first it seems stable, but then he gets a call that his father is dying. And he travels to Denmark, and in his don't talk, just do mentality, he starts to arrange everything. His father is dying, and his own need doesn't come into it. After his father's death, he realized he can't go on like this, and finally starts talking about his emotions. Now, and this is his most important lesson, he can talk about his emotions if he needs to. And this, this takes a new kind of hero. anything that grows and it won't leave me alone oh I gotta do something I gotta do something moving higher and faster free half the world's belly 